looking at this brace of Santa Gata supercar bulls and you could be forgiven for thinking that I was in the land of La Dolce Vita. But when you observe the stately home behind Stoner Park, we could only be in England. Stoner Park is near Henley on Thames. It's England at its greenest and most pleasant. And this place has been hosting enthusiast car shows for decades. But the one that's here today is rather special. In fact, you could describe it as super. So Tom, um, tell us about this incredible car. Uh, it's a Fessel Vega HK500. They were made in France, in Paris. So it's a French car, but it has a 6.3 litre Chrysler engine. So it's quite quick. In 1959, they were the fastest four-seater production car in the world with 150 miles an hour top speed, which is quite a thing then. So who was first with this, let's build a car and put a big Yankee V8 and it, was it Jensen or Fassel? No, Fassel was before Jensen. Jensen came later. Are you sure, Tom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the French thought of something before us? Well, I think so. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I think it's such an interesting car. Yeah. Not just because of the client list, which includes all sort of Hollywood lumin luminaries. Almost got that word out. See, I did that thing. I reached for a big word and I didn't <laughs> quite get there. Famous people. Hollywood famous people, Ava Gardner, Frank Sinatra, yeah. people like that, but also legit elite racing drivers. So it's not just the boulevardier. No, no, I mean, Sterling Moss had one. He used his, instead of flying around all Europe, yeah. around the racing circuits, he drove his Fassel Vega because he loved to drive it. There was a rumor that he also liked to pick up the women as he went around, but he reckoned it was the car to do it in. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you go about buying a car like this? I mean, I, would I be right in thinking that the vast majority of them were sold outside of France, mainly North America, I would imagine? Yeah, America, a lot in the Middle East. Um, the Shah of Iran had one, various kings out there had them because they were so expensive, they were more expensive than a Rolls Royce. So you had to have the money to buy them. Was it the most expensive car in the world when it was new? I, that I don't know, to be honest, but it, it was you know, very expensive. So if you want one, is it better to look for one in the States than in Europe? Well, yeah, in the States, I mean, there are a few in Europe. There's, there's the odd one being found in France now, sort of a, a barn wreck. There's some coming up, but yeah, the States is the best place to buy them. See, in both the car and the motorcycle world in recent times, we've seen a revival of the classic names. I mean, I was talking about this with one of the guys who started up Triumph again in the 1990s. Yeah. And we were stood outside a Triumph dealership in Manchester, a big Triumph dealership, saying, BSA, Norton, Triumph have all come back. Yeah. yeah. And, and when we met in 93, if you'd said that, it would have been like, you need to, <laughs> yes. you need to get your head checked. Yes. They're yeah, never ancient. coming back. So I'm heading towards a question here, Tom, and I think you know which one it's going to be. Why hasn't Fassel come back? There is a guy that's making a Fassel Vega racing car, which he hopes to race at Le Mans. But whether that ever comes off, I don't know. But I don't know. It's why they haven't re, you know, redone the name, because it was such a famous name in its day. Yeah, and it was such a, you know, if, if you want to sell people, because the only idea, back in the day, this would have sold, this is, for me, the greatest Grand Touring car of all time. This is for you and your wealthy friends to travel, to have breakfast in London, lunch in Paris, yeah. dinner in Monaco. Yeah. That, that's what it's for, isn't it? Yeah, because it just cruises. I mean, it just goes at that sort of speed. It's a, it's a great Grand Tourer. It takes a lot of luggage because you can flap the back seat down, you've got a parcel shelf. And it was just something you went, yeah. Yeah, as you say, just yeah. travelled around Europe with. Yeah, and if you're clever and you love old cars like this, then more or less anything else in this period that's really quick or as quick as this has got some 
insanely complex quad cam V8 yes. <laughs> where you need to find an elderly genius who lives in the middle of nowhere yeah. who's the only man left alive who can fix them. Yeah. But this has got a Hemi, a yeah. Chrysler Hemi. Yeah, I mean, it's you can't break it. It just keeps going. I mean, I've done various things to the car to sort of renovate it. I haven't touched the engine. There's no need. There's no need. It's American. It works. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Tom. That's beautiful, okay. beautiful car. Thank you very much. Guy, uh, we've been at various shows throughout this year. Uh, this one, I think, is the best. I have to agree with you, Steve. The setting alone... Um, and the cars that we've drawn. I mean, we're stood next to this gorgeous W.O. Bentley just across from an 8C Alpha. We, we haven't seen cars like that during the season, have we? Not really, but there are also plenty of the sort of everyday cars that are a feature of these shows, and which, funnily enough, I mean, there's an absolutely immaculate E-Type just there. Far better than ever the cars that came out of Rounds Lane were. But... You expect to see E-types at car shows, whereas you don't really expect to see a Brabham Viva, which we saw at the last one, or down there there's a Dutton Aqua car. It's the beauty of classic shows. It's what the team managed to draw together. I mean, I'm lucky enough to stand at the front and talk to people about their passions, their pride and joys. Here at Stoner Park, we've got, we've got a trio of Dinos. Yeah, early 1970s, gorgeous to me one of the prettiest cars ever made but as you say you also wander around there's a lovely austin 7 top hat saloon down underneath the chestnut tree over there there's a lotus europa there's cars that you or i well i could aspire to and then there's also these elite level yeah. supercars and they're all parked up next to each other it's what i mean there's an f12 ferrari there with more signatures on it than anything else in the world it's in the guinness book of world records someone is going to think that's their life made because they've seen it well we're from the mixed tape era aren't we where you'd <laughs> in your bedroom you'd get your vinyl and you'd get your other tapes and you'd get your your twin deck people won't know what the hell we're talking about you could go to dixon's and you could get a sang yong twin deck recorder so you could tape other people's tapes not just tape your vinyl oh no we were way past that and you'd make the perfect mix tape for in the car mm -hmm. so it'd be your perfect mix of tunes and these shows are like a great mix tape aren't they absolutely and they are curated <laughs> gently curated to give people a bit of everything as i say there's there's le mans level hypercars here and there's also morris miners and every single thing in between. It's a glorious mixtape. It's the right analogy. And as the commentator, I was going to ask you how much preparation you do, but I guess the answer is going to be a lifetime, Steve. Absolutely, Steve. Since 1982, I've been preparing <laughs> for this role. Because you've got every kind of car coming in front of you. And in a way, that's great. But doing the job that you do, talking to everybody over the PA, the pitfalls, the pratfalls, the mistakes that could potentially be made... For instance, calling that car there a Ferrari Dino, you could do that and infuriate at least a third of the people here. How do you avoid that? Um, you think before you're opening your mouth. I mean, your time in telly, you know that this is a one-take situation. If I let it out, I know, and I can tell in our standard setting at classic shows, I'm in an arena, I've got so many sets of eyes looking at me, and I'll be chuntering away, talking about this, and the brain will just have a little bit of a glitch, and it'll be out my mouth, and I think, Ah, oh, those 17 people in the Austin Healy shirts are going, no, 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 lad, you got that wrong, no, it's wrong. To do what I do, you have to know, I mean, I, I describe it as being a jack of all, but a master of sod all, basically. You've got to know a little bit about everything, recognise the badge, know that it's essentially this, and then allow yourself to be educated by the owner, because they will always know more than I do about what they've got, yeah. and not make it about me, make it about what they've bought and why they bought it. You have a great way of bringing them in and drawing out some of those great stories they've got to tell. It's very kind, Steve. I think that ought to be the end of the interview. End it on a high.
Ross, do you like old cars? Most people I've met in motor racing really don't like cars. They like racing cars. Uh, I like both. I think um, uh, I love old cars. And, and you know, my car collection started when I was working at Jaguar in the 80s, Jaguar sports cars, uh, where we did Le Mans. And I bought some, I bought an E-Type, bought a Mark II Jag, and it kind of evolved from there. And then, of course, I spent 10 years at Ferrari. So uh, I got to see all the inner workings of the classic car departments and all the rest of it. So I've always been quite passionate about cars. Um, so And racing cars for me somehow are a separate, a separate compartment. Uh, it's like cats and dogs really, isn't it? They are, and, and you know, racing cars are pretty extreme versions of engineering. I mean, they're, they're planes with wheels. Uh, and whereas an old car with its history and its uh, background and its patina and its charisma, it's a different sort of thing, really. Do you think this enthusiasm for old cars will continue, or do you think it's going to die with us? <laughs> Which is a terrible thing to say, but it might happen. What do you think? I don't think so. I think we're seeing... You know, younger people now starting to show an interest. I mean, certainly, if, you know, slightly uh, digressing now, but if you look at Formula One, there's a whole new demographic of young people uh, uh, enjoying the sport and getting involved in the sport. Uh, and I think it will carry on with cars. Um, you know, they are they are beautiful works of art uh, and a lot of fun. So I think it will continue. Uh, what have you come here in today? Uh, I've got that um, blue Ferrari. So, so. A blue Ferrari, so is that like Rob Walker blue? Yes, yeah, Rob Walker. It, it, it's a, a car, that's actually a replica of a car I own. Uh, so I have the original and then I built a copy that I can use, take to a, you know, picnics like this and not worry about it and have some fun. Uh, and um, I like to look after the original uh, and this one's much more usable. So, uh, But it's actually a, a carbon copy of the 1960 TT winner, which is... I have in my garage at home. So, dog of the day, and what a great day for dogs this was. However, there could only be one winner, and here he is. This is Nigel, the Italian Greyhound. Some people say he only won because he belongs to the organisers. How dare they? How hard is it to decide what gets to come and what doesn't? Uh, it, you know, it's it's almost impossible, but then you just have to go with your heart and go, what, I want to put a mixture of great cars here, modern cars, old cars, classic cars, new cars, and we don't worry if they're, you know, some of them are not genuine, there's a 550 spider up there, it's not an original. But it's about what the people like, and it's about the crowds coming and seeing something beautiful and going, why not? There are other shows where you can go to and they say, you'll never get that car in here because it's not original, but we're not worried about that. I don't think there's an event like this anywhere, and you can park your car and just talk to people with other cars, and that's the it's a meeting, that's the great thing. A car is not anything without the, the owner, and the owner's story and, the, and it's the relationship with that car is what makes it unique. So a car is a one-off because somebody owns it. So I like the fact that people come here, talk about their cars, talk to other people, have an ice cream or have a Fort and Mason's hamper in this, this kind of this amphitheatre which is made for car events. So I love it. I think it's great. I always get to wander around at these shows. We have a, a feature car of the day. Um, and I get to pick my favourite car. It's always something wildly different, um, which probably says more about me than it does about the cars. But is there a car here today that really, amongst this exceptional collection, and as you say, such an incredible variety mm. of cars from all around the world at all price levels, is the one that leaps out at you, sir? Oh, um, I... The, I'm, I'm a Porsche 911 fan, but I'm not going to pick one of those. And not the, but there are some amazing, like there's a, a Lotus Esprit Essex there, which is 
I mean, I'd, I'd, if somebody said, here are the keys, it's yours, I'd be so happy because it's just, they're coming back. These cars, the thing about, it's like fashion, they go in and out of fashion. Those cars, I think, Lotus Esprit, my God, they're stunning. And uh, there are some beautiful old Austin 7s, which, and people say, oh, I had one of those, or my father had one of those. Somebody said, my father had one of those, and there were eight of us, and we went from Surrey down to Cornwall. Eight of them? Yeah. So there were two adults and six in the back. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, didn't, didn't students used to do that in the 1960s? They used well, to do it with minis, didn't yeah. they? I, I think that you know that's a great thing. We mixed it all up, and you you can walk past an Aston Martin, and there's a you know an Austin Seven, and then there's a Ferrari, and then there's a Lamborghini, and then there's something else, something else. And we put the nice ones at the front because we're we're trying to obviously build up the stature of the event but we're never going to change it we're never going to make it something this will never be one of those fancy shows good yeah <laughs> yeah I think so it's an honest it's an honest day out for all the family you know that's what it should be one of the greatest things for me about these shows is seeing the cars and it always sounds like I think we've both been careful not to have a go but I do love to see amazing cars arriving having been driven here on the road yes. not trailered not covered up no. driven somebody's got up this morning and thought do you know what let's go to stoner park yeah. and they've just come down in the car i think that's more i mean very few car shows allow cars just to be trailered in i've just been at pebble beach and they have a tour especially so they've stopped all that so anybody wants to do well in the competition they have to be on the tour we all have cars because we like driving. I mean, yes, I like looking at cars, but we all like driving them, really, don't we? When they first did the London Brighton, I think there were about 400 eligible cars, if that. Now, there's well over 1,500 cars that can do uh, eligible for the event. I think that's like classic bikes. They're, more, you know, they're all being looked after, restored, and it's great. You know, what, what more do you need than a bike? Well, I'm not going to argue no, I, with that. I've got a bike, yeah. <laughs> Time for my car of the day, and here at Stoner Park, that has been a tough task. So many truly great cars here today. But as we know, the thing with all cars is, it's as much about the story that goes with them and their relevance to you. And a car that means a lot to me is this one, 1991 Honda NSX, the first true supercar from Japan. It's not a Porsche, it's not a Ferrari. It's a Honda, but to bikers like me, that name is just as meaningful and evocative as anything to come out of Europe. 270 brake horsepower, mid-mounted, 3-litre V6. This one's mated to an automatic gearbox and aircon. And for a lot of people, that would mean it can't be considered in the same way as you may a Porsche or a Ferrari. But let me tell you the difference between those cars and this one. This one worked. Everything on it worked. It was as reliable as a Honda Accord, and that's why they sold so many in America. And I'll tell you what, this car's over 30 years old. It's in regular use, and it looks like it just rolled out to the factory. How many 30-year-old Ferraris do you think could say that? That's right, none. It's a Honda. So Rupert, tell us why you've come along today. Well, I've been invited here uh, along with Johnson Bahari, whose uh, foundation uh, I chair, to uh, enjoy the festivities, enjoy the fun, and help promote the Johnson Bahari VC Foundation a little bit. Yeah. Well, tell us about this uh, amazing car that you're that you're leaning on so casually. It's quite a thing, isn't it? It's uh, it's a 1934 Alfa Romeo 8C Monza, so it's got a eight-cylinder, three-litre supercharged engine on an Alfa 6C chassis. And I was in this car in Italy, uh, the back end of last year, doing the Cento Oro de Modena. The oldest car on the event, charging through the mountains and uh, having some nice meals in the evening. 
How do you think we're doing pretending that we don't know each other and that we're not mates and we don't actually like go on holiday together? <laughs> How do you think that's going, Rupert? Well, I think I've never seen you before in my life. The fact that uh, only 10 days ago we were in Scotland on motorbikes uh, causing mayhem in the Highlands and Islands. But this is what it's all about, isn't it? It's about, today's been so great here at Stoner yeah. Park. People getting together, having a great time, talking, looking at cars, amazing. It, it's been a very, very relaxed atmosphere. So David Cook, who I, who's standing behind you now, causing trouble there, uh, has brought this along. He's now looking at us to wonder what we're talking about him for. Uh, but also Johnson Harry's turned up with his family. They've had a lovely time. The kids, especially his daughter, funny, he was really into cars. And we had a racing at Goodwood last weekend in the Setrington Cup. So um, it's nice to just to, to bring the family along to these things. And it's not a load of old codgers like you and me standing around talking about grommets and camshaw lifts and other silly stuff like that. But have fun and enjoy the company of interesting and fun people. Matthew, what a great day we've had here at Stoner Park. Yes, wow, um, just taking a breath Steve really, but uh, fantastic day, unbelievable selection of cars, weather held off, um, people were in good spirits, um, yeah, very happy. Such an informal atmosphere, I think that's one of the things that the people that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to all kinds of people here today, that's the thing that they've identified as making this show special. Yeah, I think so. I think it's something we intentionally tried to kind of pitch it at that level, um, have something that was interesting, engaging, some fantastic content, um, but, but kind of inclusive, um, not too exclusive, um, something for everybody. And I think you're right, I think there was a fantastic atmosphere and that was something that we, yeah, worked hard to achieve and I think it's been delivered. So future plans, the event will be back next year, but I believe you've got something else in store as well, yeah? Yeah, very much. Um, we're looking to go to two one day events next year. So the first of those will be the 19th of May. Um, and then in, a, in September date as well to be announced. So the idea is to have um, a spring and autumn uh, meeting, uh, May, September. And yeah, similar theme, hopefully with new bits of content, but again, some fabulous cars and just a really nice, relaxed day out. Well, what a way to see out 2023's car shows. Stoner Park was a blast. Keep looking at the website for news of what's going on next year. All sorts of exciting things. See you then.